Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Uh, Jared Brandon, a friend in one pickups. Hey, everybody, this is Todd from the Guitar Knobs. No crazy accent. We are really stoked that you are listening to our show. We love bringing it to you, and I'm just thrilled to death at the end of this long work day. I get to hang out with two of my best friends in the world and uh, and some stranger. Stranger, who are you? <laughs> Michael Varela from Tontuga FX. Awesome. Soon to be on that list. <laughs> hey! We're really excited you're here, Mike. Um, yeah, thanks for having me on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we're, we've got, uh, hopefully, everybody's seen the unboxing and the demo that we did. So, obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm personally very excited to talk about this and find out more about uh, his awesome pedal line. Um, so, we're going to dig into that in a little bit. And if you've heard our show before you know how this goes so you know how this is going to roll and if you're new to the show well bless your hearts welcome aboard yes sir yes ma'am yes whatever you are we're glad that you're here and we're glad that you're listening um we got a couple things to to uh to announce Uh, before that let's say we got some let's say we got some new people uh tony what do we do on the show well let's just say you're first time listener you have no idea what these guys are talking about. These knobs, if you will. Well, we like to talk about gear. We like to talk about boutique gear. Uh, we like to talk to the builders and makers and movers and shakers. <laughs> I like how I got that I did. rhyme in there. You should do that often. It's great. <laughs> we like to have one on too. We love the one-on-one learning episodes. Yes. And we like to get the story behind the story. That's right. right. Exactly. So thank you very much for that. Um, and as before we get into all that business, uh, we do have a couple of announcements. First of all, we want to be, say a big fat thank you to <laughs> Correct Amundo. And if you don't know what Correct Amundo yeah. is, then I'm a little bit sad for you because you've never seen Happy Days. And if uh, you do right. know, then a. So, uh, that is correct. Road Mics for providing our Roadcaster Pro, the awesome. Thing that collects our voices and the Procaster mic, the other awesome thing that collects our voices. If you are interested in maybe starting your own podcast or just capturing some stuff, your voice, your storytelling, your reading books, or whatever it is that you need to capture with mics and microphones and and maybe it's a, maybe you got a couple of friends named Mike who also want to plug. I don't know. Uh, check <laughs> hey, out. Speaking of which, our friend Mike just got engaged. Who really? Yeah, you didn't see that? Oh, Mikey. Oh, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll Native get to that audio. in a second. No, not, not, you, not you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that in a second. So anyways, thanks a lot Native very much audio. to Road for that. Now, let's get into, we're going to say a big, fat congratulations to Mike Trombley for getting engaged. And let clap a little bit of applause, everybody. Yay! Right on, Mike, doing the right thing. And I you just want to say... <laughs> the the first time I met that girl, I said to Mike, I said, "When's the date?" And he's like, "Oh, yeah, bro, hey, bro, do you <laughs> bro, hey, bro. <laughs> no, uh, bro, it's not like that, bro." <laughs> hey, bro. Uh, bull crap, it's not. I'm very excited for him. He's a good man, and I'm glad that he's got a good lady. And uh, it's a it's it was great to see the support in the guitar community the minute he posted that. It was like everybody from everywhere and every brand was like lavishing uh huzzahs to him so yep a long and beautiful life ahead of both of you we wish you uh all right, all right. did you turn into yoda <laughs> i know <laughs> went anywhere a right? beautiful life we wish you that's also <laughs> grover and <laughs> and cookie uh, monster and cookie monster <laughs> that's right <laughs> uh oh boy anyways listen we had so many requests for YouTube action, all right? And for the longest time, we didn't... I, I was just like, no, we're not putting them up there. It takes... I, I haven't figured out a way to do that. I, I've mentioned this a couple times now, so I'm going to keep it short. If you want to listen to our show while you're doing stuff on YouTube, or you just have your YouTube channel running and it's just going, then subscribe to us and it'll automatically come up. We are... All of our episodes are on YouTube, 
Wow. There is a we're snag. YouTubers. There is a snag with Podbean that I'm trying to figure out where it 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 isn't showing like uh, a handful of the earlier episodes, but like the last Maybe 180 not episodes are on there. <laughs> yeah, it's not the worst <laughs> thing. But the last, I think, 180 episodes are on there. We're up to... Uh, Oh, well, no, maybe not 180, but all, most of our episodes are up there. So just go there and listen, okay? And uh, if you do, make sure you hit subscribe. If you like it, leave a comment. If you hate it, maybe think, write it out. See if move you really on. want to leave that Nothing comment. Nothing to see here. Move on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. So uh, we also, I had another thing that we had to we had to give a big whoop de doo for, um, and I can't remember. But that's okay. Maybe I'll think of it along the way. Uh, gentlemen, why don't we find out what's going on in our music world this week? Tony Baloney is going to kick us off, and then we're going to check in with Mike. I'll show you how it's done. So this week, in fact, today, uh, I think last time we got together, I was uh, having a bitch session about DH Gate and things getting shipped to the wrong addresses and, you know, Customer service always takes care of it. But in this case, uh, the item that I ordered, which was a knockoff of a kind of a Trini Lopez uh, Deluxe with the pointy horns, not the Dave Grohl model. Uh-huh. Um, the one that I like? The, well, the one that you <laughs> like, except it does have the uh, the uh, square sound holes, the trapezoids. Yeah, and you can carve um, those out. Yeah, yeah, cover, put duct tape on them. So that one actually did arrive, um, and I thought the packaging seemed a little, shall we say, loose, <laughs> crumbly. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it, and I opened it up, and sure enough, it took a hit, and the uh, neck is popped out of the neck pocket. I don't know. I think it can be repaired, but it's just is it's it just worth one it? of the no good well i mean i could do the repair myself that's not a big deal um but you know it's just frustrating and of course customer service i contacted them and they said oh yes we we see it's damaged <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm so surprised that that <laughs> happened well you know the age gate but it does but it you know i i've had <laughs> other items show up and no problems whatsoever as yeah, you know, know. many people know they they ship them in these basically styrofoam coffins, and um, most of the time they make it through just right. Although I suspect at times that whether it's you know the you know China Post or the United States Post Office or whomever likes to you know have a, a contest to see how far they can throw it. Yeah, on the, it on only the takes <laughs> one bad day for one person. Yeah, you know. but um, so I, I I mean I I I know that customer service will take care of it it's a really cool guitar because this is based on uh, what would be the trini lopez uh custom which was the thicker bodied jazz box as opposed to the dave Grohl model which is more like a 335 or es 335 with um with uh, trapezoidal sound holes and a fender headstock and a fender six in line headstock which is the same on both models <laughs> but um, the cool thing about this one is I, I'm not a big fan of the real fat body jazz boxes, but this one is about the same depth as a, as an ES-335, but it has the sharp pointy horns mm -hmm. that, that, I, that I dearly love. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, whatever customer service does. Uh, generally speaking, I don't, you don't have to send them back. So I may just get my glue and clamps out and start over and see what happens. But there's going to be a lot of finished work that needs touched up. And yeah. that's just, just a nightmare on, on poly finishes. So I'll keep you posted. We'll yeah. get some, some photos. I sent Todd, you, and, and Jared photos of you know the, the guitar. You and should the dam po rush. post that up on the Facebook group. Hmm. Yeah, I, I should do that. Yeah. That way everyone can share. Yeah. And you know, the, yeah. The, the rule of thumb is the more fragile stickers they put on your box, the worse <laughs> they handle your box. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. So, well, but anyhow, so that was a, a, a kind of a big disappointment today, but, you know, we'll see. I'm sure it'll be fine. And if I can get it glued back together and working, I'll be even happier. So. Cool. Excellent. Well. 
Uh, Mike, how about yourself? What's going on in your music world? I discovered a new band and I'm really excited about it because I don't think they have a very big following and it's a very interesting concept. So I, I bet you guys are a lot like me. You're always looking for new content. Um, yeah. I found a Swedish all girl blues roots band. Huh. Uh, and they're called Among Links. And they're very interesting. They only have like three albums. Their Spotify says they only have like 500 monthly listeners. Um, they're pretty cool. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm always excited to find new stuff that I haven't heard before. You know, you always hit, you know, make a radio station or whatever, and it's all stuff you've already heard before. Yep. And, uh, this song came up and one of the girls plays harmonica. And I was like, I've never heard, this doesn't sound like old school harmonica. This sounds like a new recording. And so I go to look and it, it was just a, an odd thing to come across. I thought it was really neat. Ah, can you spell, uh, what's the name again? It's among, and then it's links, L-Y-N-X. Cool. Is it, that makes me think that it's going to sound like you don't know how it feels. From no, uh, Tom Petty. not at all. N not at all. Not at all. This is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely different sounding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you said blues roots and a harmonica. I mean. I don't know that there's more than one Tom Petty song that uses harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. <laughs> it doesn't sound like that one. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to turn you on to another Swedish band that I love uh, called... Uh, the, the Valentinos. <laughs> <laughs> no, but thanks for the plug. Um, Dungeon. D-U-N-G-E-N. Throw them in the dingen. They are. <laughs> they're kind of... Is this of, a Swedish metal band? No, no, no. Um, they're like... I have to, I have to assume... No, not at all. Uh, it's sort of like, um, um, it's really hard. To, it's kind of like, um, like if, if, um, Tame Impala was really progressive and had a jazz background hmm. and, and kind of really rootsy, it's really good stuff. I legit, I really like that. Um, do they, do they have a song called Buffalo Bill? <laughs> no, <laughs> but, um, Panda by that band was a was there sort of like if they had a breakout you know but that um, was it yeah I, I sh i've turned a couple everybody that i've turned on is like holy crap i've never this is fantastic it's it's excellent stuff really excellent oh, very stuff. good so i've got i've got two great two new suggestions for the shop tomorrow yeah you're gonna like it um and it's minimal uh minimal vocals too so not everything is like uh super vocally but man I, it's really fantastic jared how about yourself oh jeez well this past week um was that a hair dryer yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a brand new future futuristic hair dryer it sings from sweden oh boy that's right uh zach was gone for a week down in North Carolina or South Carolina at some beach, like North something. I don't know. You got anyway, this, you got this he United States thing me. worked out pretty well. So Yeah, right. I think it was in so, East uh, Carolina. Yeah, something like that. Somewhere down there. and uh, But he wasn't here. So, you know, I had a, a lot more on my plate. And uh, he came back and we got everything uh, tip top again. Uh, got the laser unpacked. I got it. And uh, did you use it, air quotes when you said laser? No, <laughs> lifted it by myself. Uh, no the laser, not my freaking laser. No, um, <laughs> I'm getting all the exhaust parts this week and yeah. gonna pop a hole in the side of the house for a dedicated exhaust for it. Good choice, like, smart, yeah, because it's it's 428, uh, whatever you call Milliwatts. it. The, uh, wind velocity or whatever you call it, B BM BPI or I don't know, I don't remember what you call BPMs, it. Probably. BPMs probably BPM. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it, it. You should probably have a vent there, anyways. As much soldering as you do. Hey, hey you yeah, said it. I did. Good it. for you, Todd. <laughs> yeah, 
of just because you said it right, I might do that. Yeah. And I I actually have some soldering um filters. And, you know, yeah. That yeah, you got to breathe, the, you got to breathe that smoke through the yeah, free you buzz. Can't breathe it. You're giving away a free buzz. <laughs> It, so it, it explains a lot, people. <laughs> so, you know, there's some work to be done there. I've got my Coral Draw program and uh, my good buddy Wolf out in – Wolf with Wolf Stone pickups. I'll plug for him. He's out in Washington, and he's uh, he's so good and, and articulate about showing people what to do and helping people out. So he's going to help me out with the laser. Nice. So, um, really excited about that. Um, he was just trying to get a hold of me a second ago, as a matter of fact. But mm. – so that's about it, you know, just catching up with work. Um, as far as my guitars and stuff like that, uh, I am playing them a lot more with the new band and, well, with the old band. So, yeah, everything's great. You've got an old band that sounds new, and you make pick up, new pickups that look old. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> All right. That's right. Perfect. Well done, well done. Um, well. How about you, Todd? <laughs> thank you, Tony. Uh, as I mentioned, hopefully you've, uh, you've seen the demo video and the, uh, unboxing, but mostly the demo video. And I- I've talked a lot about demos and doing them and, or not doing them. And I just got to the point where I was like, you know what? I, I, I should at least see what a, a bit of a, a I'm going to dip my toe in it. I haven't committed anything because I'm still trying to figure out, like, does the format work? Is it worth it? Um, it, It's still a time commitment. And as I mentioned, I'm pretty strapped on that. But I was really happy with the way that this one came out. Um, There's some things I got to change on it. But the whole point of this is that I used my Audix Cab Grabber mic Mm. holder that I mentioned before. It was 49 bucks on Sweetwater. And it's basically like a spring-loaded mic stand that literally just clamps onto the side of your cab and holds the mic in place. And it and man, it was awesome because I didn't have to set up anything on the floor. Nothing. I didn't have to break everything down. It's just it. I have it on there now. You know, as long as my cab is in my basement, and when I take it to go practice, I just go. You know, pull it up, pull it open a little bit, and it comes right off. So really easy to set up. It worked like a charm and I ended up getting a recording and I used some of our, some of the things that we discussed on, uh, on, on our recording at home 101 Mm -hmm. to do that. And I ran it out to my, um, uh, USB interface and did the, did the uh, demo for the Delphine, which I think ended up sounding pretty damn good. No, I think you did a really good job. I mean, it's, I thought it was, uh, I mean, you know, I I thought it, it it showed what a below average guitarist could do. That's it's about <laughs> right. And you're not far off. And then, no, I I'm, I'm I'm just I'm yanking your chain. Well, no, no it, it, it sounded good. That's that's a point because um one of our good friends Cody Lane Cody Lane uh, hit us up and uh, you know he just said, hey man, great job on the demo. I I've always said you guys should be doing those and I just got into it talking a little bit about it and I said. Look, I'm, I'll just be totally honest with you, man. Like, time is a major thing that I don't have much of. I'm doing probably too many things. Uh, and also, the market, the, the market or the channels are just so saturated with everybody doing a demo because everybody can be a demo artist now. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, hey, mm-hmm. there's plenty of people that do that really, really well. I don't need to crowd that with saying, look at me, I'm going to demo. It's not about that for me. Um, I just wanted, I, th- I thought this is, I should share this stuff. If I'm, you know, if somebody's saying, hey, I'm going to be on your show and here's the stuff, I do what I can. And then I said, well, if I'm being truly honest, a big part of that is also there's an intimidation factor. Because I, you know, I see people like Ron Kilo and, uh, you know, Eric Mero and and um, Dip Switch demos and like all these people are, they've got they're like mini studios in their home and I'm like I, I'm in my crappy basement with terrible lighting, and and I have to set it up and tear it down every time. This is this isn't gonna come out the way to the standard that I try to hold things for the guitar knobs. 
Like I do try to hold this at a, at a, at as high as a standard as I can muster. And I want to make sure that if I'm, if we're going to do this kind of stuff, that it's at that same level or at least close to it. And, yeah, but, uh, but, but Todd, I think what you just described is like 90%, maybe 99% of the, 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 the average players out there, you know, not, uh, not everybody has access to studio space or right. it has a permanent setup or things like that. You know, at right. the end Embrace of the day, imperfection, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, that, that I, I felt that what you put out there was a good, you know, I mean, I, I think people would just, can relate to that because they said, Oh, well, that's kind of like what I would do. Cool. Well, so well, done. thanks Tony. Anyways. So all that is to say Audix <laughs> cab grabber, <laughs> check them out at, uh, I, I would, I would recommend trying one out and they have them for bigger cabs too. Like if you got a, like a, an older, uh, 412 cabinet or something that's, that's kind of got a little bit more, uh, width to it. So anyhow, that's all I got for that. Uh, how about some of this? One, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. So, Todd, um, with the band and everything, I got my pedal board going, and I made a few changes, uh, especially with some wires, some really good patch cords uh, made by Tour Gear. Yes, yes, yes. Those, I, and I assume you like them, right? They fit everything because they're tiny and they're durable and they're awesome. They really are. Uh, so this is our this is our uh, very casual lead into Tour Gear <laughs> Designs Patch Cables promo. Um, it's true though; they're fantastic. That's, that's a cool part. I've maintained that we won't we won't do you know ads or promos for anything that that we don't really believe in and and these are really outstanding cables everybody they come in a myriad of sizes which is very helpful it's not just six inch and there you go it's you know they got three four six eight ten and twelve i believe and uh they also come in s shape so you don't have to do any twisty stuff which ends up loosening your cables a lot of time and they've got probably the smallest footprint as far as it as far as the, the the uh you know, the jack size uh, of just about anything out there. So, And they are flatter than a crepe. They are they very are. flat. Uh, and They're crepe the, cables. And the, aside from them being really high quality, they are incredibly affordable. All you got to do is just compare a couple of prices and you'll be like, what the, I need to get a pile of these things. And if you do decide to get a pile of these things, go to tourgeardesigns.com forward slash discount forward slash the guitar knobs and you're going to save 10 percent off of your entire order and they ship out real quick there yep. you go and they're they're quality checked yep uh and if you want to hear the episode go back in uh, a couple from now and and uh listen to when we had them on the show fantastic Great. stuff okay that was some awesomeness and here's some more we're going to get our four on the floor from mike varella and drop it on us man all right, so I, it took me a long time to think of this one because um, I only get the four, but I'm I'm also a, a small pedal board fan anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the '76 script Dynacomp. Mm. Uh, a lot of people don't like the color it gives you. I do like the color it gives you. It's just, just a little something different. Describe that color. <laughs> Uh, you know, it will, your pickups make a big difference. Uh, you know, the output of your pickups make a huge difference with the Dynacomp color. Um, but it's like a, a thickening feel. So you're getting a little bit of thickening from the, um, from the compression itself, but you're also getting just like a little bit of gain underneath the whole thing and a little bit of lift under the whole thing. It's just a little bit, it, if you just have that by itself, you're going to get a different sound than what you were just getting before. Even if you have the compression turned all the way down on the Dynacomp, you can still add a little something to it. And it's just something special. I really like it. Sometimes, no, I said, sometimes when I have too much licorice, I get a <laughs> sickening feel too. <laughs> so I, I like the script, the 76 script, because I guess, you know, the whole point of the four on the floor is I can pick whatever I want. I don't yeah. own one of these, um, but I have the reissue scripts and the reissue block scripts. Um, and I like them both. So I assume that the old ones obviously better, right? Yeah, obviously, obviously. 
And uh, so out of the Dynacomp, I'm going into, this one's going to be controversial because a lot of people don't like it, but this is my favorite chorus of all time. And it is the stereo electric mistress, the digital one. Oh, I love that thing. Uh, it's to me, it's the best chorus sound that's ever been made, and it's a ninety dollars pedal. It's fantastic. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, so, wh- why I, why is that the best chorus? Like, what what is it? It is the most saturated chorus sound that I've ever heard out of any pedal ever. I mean, it's. It's so over the top ridiculous that it just leaves a- anything else far, far, far behind. Okay, so you're going for like bring the co- back it up, like beep, 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 beep. All right, keep it coming, guys. Back it up. Bring up the <laughs> chorus truck. Okay. Yeah, just dump the whole chorus truck on me. All right. Uh, it's it's just ridiculous. The the flanger is not the best, but you really want that chorus sound. Mm-hmm. It's simple to use. Uh, I'm an idiot, so three knobs is perfect for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but out of the Electric Mistress, I'm going into probably my favorite rat derivative, which is the Arcafex Soothsayer. Okay. That is a really, really nice rat sound. Uh, and it's really open-ended. You can do a lot of mods with it. Um, I've owned two or three different ones over the years, and they all have different stuff done to them. Uh, I haven't kept I held on to any of them, um, but I'm probably going to end up with another one here pretty soon. I really like that one. Uh, and out of there, Wait, ending may, with, may I ask is is yeah, there uh, is it just the three knob or is there any any added bits to it? I've owned one that's four knob. I've owned one that's three knob. I've owned one that has some external switches that switch clipping and high and low gain. Um, there's a lot of different versions of them just that people have picked up and modded. Cool. So the I would say probably my favorite one is just your standard three knob um, with the high low gain switch. Um, I like that one. Mm-hmm. You know, if I was to get one just stock, I would probably do that mod myself because I like it a lot. Yeah, it is. It is really nice to have on, uh, especially. Uh, it just gives you so many more options. And the low gain version of the Rat is actually really nice. It, it is. It's more like. Um, I, I don't want to say like a 1981 style because it came way, 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 way after these guys. Um, but that low gain rat sound is a really nice bass breakup sounds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I prefer uh, yeah. the low gain one myself because I, I, f- I, I don't like uh, some of the compression that you get from the high, high gain stuff in the rat. See, that's why you put the compressor way at the front and just compress the, the garbage out of it and just, you know... <laughs> Just compress the whole signal. <laughs> uh, and you can use the the rat, you know, switch places with the electric mistress and you got some some cool, you know, Van Halen style 80s tones going. Mm. I, re- I really like those. Uh, and I want to finish it off with the Catlin Bread Echo Rec. Mm, the, yeah. the multi-head delay is, that's my yes. jam. That's the gold one with the face on it front, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It's yep. such a cool design too. It really is. Yeah, excellent. I don't know. I don't know what Callum Bread's doing with it now. You know, I, I guess it came out with another pedal earlier this year, but you know, nothing like the the Echo Rack. The Echo Rack is just the original, really cool delay pedal. For a while, everybody had it on their board, mm-hmm. and I, I just kept mine because it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, that is a it is a very musical sounding pedal. I think that sometimes you can turn on a pedal and it sounds like an effect. And you can sometimes you can turn on a pedal and it just sounds like it's a stepchild to what your signal is doing. But That's then the way to describe it. And yeah. some of them, um, I know another one that I'm going to talk about real soon <laughs> has an incredibly musical. It it it's, it has a little bit of a life of its own that it's hard to say. It's just it's just the extra twinkle. It's a specialness. So there, musical. <laughs> Oh, all right. That's a nice four on the floor. All right, man. Well, thanks for sharing. We need to say a great big thank you as well to John Fiddle for providing our digs for our studio. He's uh, running Relay Recording. You can check him out at johnfiddle.com. He is very, very good at capturing guitar tone and, and also talking about how to get the guitar tone you want. So I strongly suggest... Uh, reaching out to him if you are uh, looking to try to do that for recording or otherwise. Um, so big fat thanks to John. Thanks, John. 
Well, we have a very special guest, as we've been talking about. We've got Mike Varela from Tone Tuga Effects, and I happen to know what a Tortuga is, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you probably get that a lot, I imagine. You know, from, from the oddest people, I didn't know that a Tortuga was slang for people from Brazil. And so I get a buku amount of DMs that are in Portuguese. And I'm like, hey, yeah. what's going on, man? American guy over here. <laughs> yeah, I well, it's him, also... I copy and paste it in Google Translate and just say, hey, you know, whatever. Send them the the rock hands and just say thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and, and aside from slang for that, it's also turtle. So, yes. <laughs> which is, I think, what you were actually going for. I'm that assuming. was what I was going for, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, one thing that I think it's worth mentioning, um, and I hope I did enough justice when we were discussing, when I was doing the, the boxing, the unboxing, rather, I think you're paying a lot of attention. I'm, I'm guessing there's kind of a, maybe a surf or, or some just, you know, inclination towards the ocean and wildlife and the environment. You want to like just set that up real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm, I'm in North Carolina. Um, you know, I grew up by the coast. Um, you know, I recently left the coast in, I guess, you know, 2014, I followed the job to Charlotte, which is a little bit inland. Mm -hmm. um, but I still do a lot of volunteering on the coast. Um, the main places that I go to are North Myrtle, which I, I think that's what what Jared was talking about earlier. Yeah, that's uh, where he was in North. There you Myrtle. go. <laughs> yep. I didn't want to interrupt. East Carolina is also a different place. You, you could have told him there. something completely <laughs> fictional, and he would have said, "Yep, that's the place." Yeah, if he was partying in East Carolina. That's a different thing entirely. So, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, Holden Beach, uh, Ocean Isle Beach, those are all big places that I volunteered at. Um, you know, I, I grew up around ocean life. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to dive a bunch of really interesting places. I'm a, a very avid scuba diver. And so, you know, I said, when I started this company, uh, I'm not going to do it unless I can do a little bit of good on the side. That's and awesome. so what I chose is, hey, let me help it, Even if it's just a tiny amount, let's clean up the coast. Um, let's raise awareness for, for endangered species. Uh, and one of the organizations that I'm, that I donate to is, um, actually a, a lobbyist group that actually goes and, and proposes new uh, ecological bills to, you know, to the government and to try to make them, that's really the way to do it, you know, is to, you have to play by their rules. And that means, hey, you know, if you make a law that says you can't do X, Y, Z, that's the way you're going to get the benefits. So mm -hmm. I've decided to, I've dialed back a little bit from donating to the small groups. And I've really gone towards these lobbying groups that are going to go and, you know, pound the floor of the Senator or Congress and, and make it happen that way. Right. Now that's a really interesting point because I think, um, you know, there are lots of causes that uh, guitar that the guitar world has uh, been involved in um, in the past and recently, and I think there's always a struggle of like I don't want to give my money to some big giant group they already have enough money, and or it's like I want to find the small group because they need the money, but your point is well made and it's a it, obviously something you have to sort out for your own self whomever you are if you're interested in in helping in some way but uh, i i guess i've never really th necessarily thought of it that way so I, I i appreciate that enlightening thought yeah and another good you know thing that i try to do is reduce my footprints, even though it's a pretty smallish footprints, you know, just a, I'm a small pedal company. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the aggregate waste of this industry in particular with packaging, oh, yeah. um, and with plastics is, is huge. Um, and it's the exact same methodology. If you say, Hey, I want to quit smoking or I want to lose weight. It's not huge changes at, in a short amount of time that really add up and, and make that difference. It's small incremental changes. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm only going to smoke 18 cigarettes a day. And then I'm only going to smoke 15 cigarettes a day. Um, and so, you know, one thing that I want to do is I said, I want everything in my box, except for the pedal and, and the stickers, of course, uh, you could throw it in your backyard and, you know, in, in a couple of years, it would be completely gone. Yeah. Um, so that was one thing I really wanted to do. It's, it's not, it's not the cheapest thing to, to be honest. Um, you know, buying recycled products is a little more expensive. There's a little more processing that goes into it. Um, but I kind of pride myself on 
having packaging that nothing in it other than the pedal and the stickers is is original. It's all been reused at least once. I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I think it's a nice surprise when you do open up that and you're like, oh, wow, hey, look, in some way, I might actually be doing some good. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, and cool. And, and if you want to find out more about that, you can go to your website. Where can people go to, uh, to check you out right now, by the way? Yeah, so I, I'm mostly on, um, on TontugaEffects.com uh, and on Instagram. Those are my two biggest platforms. Um, I'm also on Twitter. If you want to see me slowly descend into madness, that's, that's where I'm doing that <laughs> over there. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing pedal related on there. It's just, just me. <laughs> well, I really appreciate that part of what you're doing. I grew up, um, on the West coast in Southern California and had seen many an oil spill ruin a lot of beach life. And, uh, unfortunately, and it actually, you know, growing up in, in the, the Huntington Beach area, which literally was one of the largest oil fields in the country for a while. Uh, there was always some crazy issue going on there. So, um, yeah, let me, let me tell you, um, I, I went diving on the Great Barrier Reef in 2012 and my brother and I are, are huge scuba divers. Um, you know, we're, we're, I would say we're pretty like extra large or if we're huge, we're massive, <laughs> <laughs> very buoyant. Yeah. <laughs> and, we uh, we went back in, in 2015 and what I saw in 2012 was completely different oh. from what I was seeing it is so it happened so fast. Um, so, you know, that's, that's one thing that, that drives me is I like to enjoy these things. You know, I want my kids to be able to enjoy these things. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Uh, make sure you check out the, there's a, um, one of his main navs up there is sea turtle conservation. So you can check that out if you're interested. Uh, but mostly let's just say you're going to be checking out these pedals here. Probably. So, uh, what got a, a conservation oriented feller into making pedals? You know, I probably started out the same way a lot of guys do. Uh, and it was because I was broke and poor. Um, and when I went to college, I went to college in 2007 and, uh, I couldn't afford textbooks. Wow. Um, and I, at the time I was working in a, uh, an industrial panel shop and I had for the longest time, I had a, uh, a boss BD2 and it broke one day and I brought it into the guys in the shop and said, Hey, you know, can, can you guys fix this for me? And they said, Oh, you know, all you have to do is replace this, this here. I think it was the switch that went bad. Uh, and they showed me how to do everything. Mm. And, and after I did it, I was like, this is kind of easy. You know, if I bring you more stuff back to you guys, will you show me how to do that too? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. And they showed me how to audio probe and they showed me how to, you know, trace the signal. And, wow. um, I went on to, this is before reverb, by the way, I think what, when did reverb start in like 2013, 2014 is, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. 14, no, this was all, this is all Craigslist and, and eBay. And so, you know, I went on to Craigslist and I bought things that were specifically listed as not working uh, and I would fix them and I would flip them and I would use that money to buy textbooks for school. Mm, nice. Pretty smart. Pretty so I did, smart. Yeah, so I did that for a while. Um, after a while, I figured out, hey, there's some mods that I do to these common pedals that people seem to like. Um, you know, the community was much smaller back then. It was mostly all forum based. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, over time there were these specific things that people came back and they asked for. Um, and so I said, Hey, you know, let me make, let me make five of these and just see how they go. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, those would sell. And I'd say, okay, let me use that money to make 10 of these and see how they go. Uh, and then I said, okay, well, you know, maybe it's time to try and make this a real thing. And this is the time when I guess reverb had just gotten started, uh, 13, 14. And, um, you know, I, I said, let me, let me save, you know, four or five of these models that people seem to enjoy. And I'm going to make 20 of them. And we're just going to see if I can put a sticker on it and put my brand on it and let's see if it'll go. Uh, and, you know, it, it's been going pretty well since then. That's fantastic. So nice. is this your sole gig? No, no, it is not. No, not not yet. That's the dream. Uh -huh. but, not, but especially not in 2020. Yeah. Uh, so I, um, I inspect um, sites for the EPA. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I don't work for the EPA. I'm an independent contractor, but... Um, you know, when they're installing a new pump station or a new uh, chemical distribution station, um, 
I go out there and I make sure that, you know, the wiring is up to check and it's sampling at the correct levels. Um, and so that's what I do for, for a day job. It's, it's fun, but it's, it's disgusting when you have to do some of the wastewater plants because that's where most of the chemical stuff happens. Mm-hmm. Mm. But, you know, it, it pays the bills and it lets me make more pedals. That's cool. Yeah, my uh, my yeah, wife's just- an en- environmental manager, so she, she kind of does all that stuff for her company and instead of hiring people like you she's she's the one that <laughs> the worst people i have to deal with <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> just 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 don't bring your work home with you that's what yeah for, for sure <laughs> yeah, so the environmental stuff kind of you know trickled over into into the business side yeah yeah i can see that yeah um so you you're now a real, you know pretty adept at this uh business stuff that you're doing the, these pedals um and just to get a maybe a little bit of background of like where you're you're how much of do you think your individual musical style comes into play with the things that you're building so you know we were, we were talking off off mic a little while ago and um i i am an idiot so i like things that are very simple to use uh i like things that are not difficult to configure. Um, if something breaks, I like it to be very easy to repair. Uh, and so that's kind of the area that I try to go for. Now, now personally, I'm a blues dad, um, which mm. I know a lot of people won't like. Um, but I like other stuff too. Um, so, you know, the things that I enjoy are things that make those classical noises, but in a different way. You know, I don't think anybody would say that, you know, the, the Delphine Delay is, is particularly geared at a certain style no, um, it's it's more like a it's more like a flavor, and I really like that flavor, and I think other people will too. Now you've got five pedals that you're listing as as the ones that people can buy on your on your site right now, and I don't mean that you only have five pedals available, but you've got <laughs> five different styles of pedals. You got the Prism Fuzz, the Clockwork Multi Driver, the Clockwork Virus and the Songbird Overdrive, and then the Delphine Delay. We're going to talk at length about the Delphine. Um, but just out of curiosity, uh, the what's the difference between a Clockwork Virus and a Clockwork Multidriver? So the, the Virus was limited edition. Uh, I made that right at the beginning of the lockdowns in the U.S. Uh-huh. Uh, so I don't remember what date that was, but I did it. Um, I did it right when they were about to happen. It was about a week before it happened. And my wife and I got on Craigslist and we found some guy who was one of these doomsday prepper guys <laughs> and he, and he was selling, uh, MREs by the pound. Mm-hmm. Nice. And so we, yeah. And so we went out and we bought about, uh, I think we bought 80 pounds of MREs and I think we paid way too much for them. But, uh, the idea was, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to make a pedal. I'm going to buy all these MREs. I'm going to personally hand them out to the homeless on the, on my way to work. You know, I, I told you I, I work in uptown. Mm-hmm. Um, so on my way to work, I'll, I pass the same 20, 25 people every single day. Uh-huh. Uh, and so, you know, I said, Hey, I'm going to make these pre-packaged three days worth of food, you know, kind of like lunch boxes and, uh, give them people on the street. Um, and if I make any money selling the pedal, that'll just be me recouping my costs that I already spent. Um, and so I said, let me make some cool custom artwork. I, I had some friends online, make it for me. Um, so it is, it's the same as the clockwork, but there are only 26 of those in total. Mm -hmm. Um, that was just the the materials I had on hands. Looks Um, like it sold out. It did sell out. It it sold out a lot quicker when I I sent one to, um, to Ryan at at 60 cycle hum. Uh Um, and as soon as that video went out, you know, they were all gone in, in a matter of hours. Oh, that's cool. Uh, which was good because, you know, it was a, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to donate this after I get all the money from you guys. No, it was like, I already gave all this stuff away. You know, if I make this back, great. If I don't, well, I mean, I already gave it away. So I, I did my, my good in, in my own community. Right. Uh, cause I mean, this virus stuff has been crazy. And I just, I thought that as soon as this stuff kicked off, you know, us, you know, I'm in my house with air conditioning you guys are in your, your studio or wherever, but the people out there on the street, they're not going to have access to cleaning supplies or, or food if all the shelters shut down, which all the shelters here have shut down. Right. Uh, and so I said, hey, if I can give these guys a weekend to, to work it out, 
that'll be enough for me. That's very admirable, right. my man. Very I nice. work uh, downtown Columbus, and I see, I mean, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And, oh, um, in, in Ohio, for sure, yeah. And it's tough because, you know, you're like, I, I don't know. I, it's, it's hard to comprehend or know how to handle it. So I appreciate that you, uh, you're you doing what you can out there. That's fantastic. And I'm, I oh, know thanks. that they did too. So uh, while we're on the clockwork, what exactly, why is it a multi-driver? So I, I made that as my ideal drive. That is my sound in a box. Uh, and if you, it, it's mostly, so you can leave it on your board, you turn it on and you control the whole thing just with your volume knob. Pretty much. You set it right. on the, you set it on the pedal, uh, on the pedal as dirty as you want it to be. And then using just your volume, you can roll in between a clean version of that setting and a dirty version of that setting. Okay. So, so I don't have to be directly in front of my board to get the sound that I want. And I can play an entire set, you know, going from rhythm to lead just with my volume knob. Because, gotcha. uh, you know, I, I like to move around. Um, I don't like to sit in one place. Um, so the the clockwork was that. And I called it a multi-driver because it'll go from that clean to really, really, really dirty. And if you crank the gain all the way up, it takes the transistors on the inside and just biases them all to hell. And um, it makes a really disgusting sound. That's, it, it's a really musically disgusting sound. <laughs> uh, cool. So that that was that one. Is that based on uh, any any pedals that we know and love or anything? Uh, it, very vaguely. So uh, I was given one of the pedals that I wanted to repair when I was getting into the whole business was um, it wasn't a Butler tube driver. It was one of the knockoffs of that. Um, I, I can't I can't remember for the life of me, but it was a tube based drive. And the problem with that was one of the pins. Um, that connects to the tube was was busted, mm. so it was making this disgusting rattly sound that I really really liked, <laughs> and, and I was like, I want to make a pedal that does that, and I didn't know how to because yeah, I don't have an engineering background. Everything that I know, I've figured out on my own, just on on forums or on YouTube or you know, I read books from the from the seventies on on old hardware and, and analog circuits. And, um, I said, I got to figure out how to do that thing. Uh, and I figured out a pretty way, a pretty nice way to replicate that. Uh, and so, you know, it's kind of a, the, the clockwork is a, a really nice to really mean to really disgusting drive all in one box with only three knobs on it. Mm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, now let's see, you've got, you've also, uh, I, I want to make sure we're going to, have plenty of time on, on Delphine, but do you want to just uh, give a quick shout to you? Songbird Overdrive is the thing that I've probably seen the most of from you uh, as long as I've been as long as I've been following you. Uh, you want to just d- discuss yeah, that? Yeah, sure bit? thing, sure thing. So that one has been really really popular. Uh, I debuted that at Summer Nam last year, um, and the country guys loved it uh, because it's it is my take on what a clean distortion should sound like or a clean drive should sound like rather uh in that it's clean but not very um it's a a, a jfet based preamp uh if you were to really break it down mm-hmm. um so i actually use it as the preamp when i want to play bass uh, i plug direct into um into my interface and i use the the delphine or not the delphine the um the songbird as a preamp um it's what i use as a preamp at nam uh to boost the level of my, um, my new nibber or kind of Um, and it really, it just sits really nicely with single coils and it really makes a uh, humbuckers like, super, super fat, uh, and super saturated. And it's behind the Delphine. It's my most popular pedal by far. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I took the time to do, you know, the pandemic has been so weird. I've been trying to do, okay, let me do a quick run of this. Let me do a quick run of that. And the Songbird was one that I said, I have to do a full production run of these. And and while I was at it, I just said, hey, let me go ahead and print a bunch of interesting colors and and color combinations. And those are all the ones you're seeing on Instagram right now. Yeah, yeah. And people really liked that. So, you know, people that are listening to this can expect everything else to follow in in suit with that. Awesome. Now, for those that maybe aren't 
as familiar. You know, you you've referenced preamp. We're going to talk about preamp in a, here in a second with the Delphine delay. But, yeah. You know, when you say it's a Songbird Overdrive, but then you're talking about preamp, can you uh, just e- e- expound on the difference between a preamp and an overdrive, and and why those two might be things that we're talking about in a single pedal? Yeah, sure. So the uh, the general distinction, and I'm talking about very very broad terms, is that a, a preamp brings your bass signal up to a line level. Uh, your your guitar is putting out a very 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 low signal. It needs a little bump before it gets to the amp to to really make the sounds that you're expecting to hear. Um, so the problem is if you have a say you have like a class D style amp, it's just like a, a super hi fi sound, uh, and you want it to sound more amp like, you can't just use a, a rat or a tube screamer, for example, um, because they're not performing the same task of, um, say, like a, like the Benson preamp, uh, in that you're getting a an extreme volume boost or a signal boost rather. Um, to the degree that your Class D amp is expecting. Um, so if you were to put the two side by side, you might say, oh, you know, they sound pretty similar. But if you run the two direct into your desk, you would notice an immediate difference. I'm not sure if I, I made that more complicated or no, more, that's more a, simple. No, that's an excellent description, um, especially t- addressing directly the bass um, I guess the bass volume, the you know the volume of the bass, uh, or or the the signal boost of the bass itself, um, because preamp it was it seems to be that that was the phrase of mm, mid to late nineteen or uh, two thousand nineteen to you know through through now, and so many pedals were released as as preamps only, you know like oh this is a preamp. And we just know like, oh, that sounds really cool, but not, you know, not everybody knows why. Sure. Um, and even something, something like the, uh, the EP booster, which again, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, where that comes. We've talked about that before. Kind of Echoplex, you know, it's the, it's the preamp and the exit to acts like that. But understanding what that actually does to your signal is a different thing altogether. So thank you for that explanation. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. Uh, Tony, did you want to add anything to that part of the conversation? I know you're a big fan of the, the, you know, the preamp sound. Well, yeah. I mean, I think the, yeah, I, I always think about the, you know, like if you listen to some old recordings of when people would plug a guitar straight into the mixing board and the, you know, how, how piercing that can be. I think that's, that's kind of the same sort of thing, uh, you know, an overdrive versus a, a preamp because it's, I think the preamp, uh, puts out the, the signal, I think as, as Mike said, is, is what an amplifier expects. But if you put it into something that's super clean, uh, it doesn't always sound as good. Mm -hmm. Right. Excellent. Okay, cool. Well, I, we all maybe learned a little something. I, I certainly got a little bit more color to, to my, uh, understanding of that. So thank you. Um, on to the star of the show, I think it's fair to say. Uh, we've referenced the Delphine delay. Um, hopefully, uh, by this time, after two prompts and <laughs> whatever else, you've seen <laughs> the the demo that we put up on our Instagram. And of course, there are many other, <laughs> arguably much better demos of the Delphine delay out there. Uh, I would encourage you to check them out because us just talking about it is going to do it some service and you'll have an understanding and probably a, an, an immediate lust for it, but uh, definitely take the time to hear it. And may I also say like right out of the gate, this is an impossibly priced pedal for what you're getting. <laughs> like I, legitimately, I recorded the demo. I took it down, uh, and I was showing John, and there he had a, a couple other guys uh, for, uh, that were recording down there. I stopped in to talk to him about some stuff, and I said, "Man, listen to this!" And I was playing it on my phone, and they all stopped and they're like, "Whoa, that sounds freaking amazing!" And it was just playing on my speaker on my iPhone. 
and this is in a recording studio and all three of them are like, wow, that's that. What is that? What pedal is that? How much is that? Where can I get that? <laughs> uh, so that should give you an idea aside from, uh, you know, me going to be blathering on about this for, <laughs> for a little bit. Um, it's a really, really outstanding sounding pedal. Um, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, it was fantastic. And it was beautiful too. I mean, come on. Thank you. That was actually, I, I want your opinion on this now that it's live on the air. So in the wake of the pandemic, I've been looking for different ways to get coatings on, on, on my enclosures. And the one that you got, the gold, is actually from a gentleman out of North Carolina who uh, applies fake patina to antiques. Hmm. Huh. Uh, and so that gold is the gold patina that would be on... I don't know, like a chandelier or something. And I thought it was really interesting. Um, and so I, I said, uh, you know, the, the reason why you got the gold one is because the white ones that I'm probably known for on the internet, um, that really makes the graphic pop. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I received, they were not to my liking. So I sent them back and I said, you know, you know Todd is expecting this pedal. Uh, I got this gold one. It looks pretty good. Let me send it to him. So what is your first impression of the gold? Well, I'm not going to lie. The first impression of the gold, I'm like, I, I love, <laughs> I'm, I've am i been on record. I love gold and black. I don't know why. I just <laughs> all, my, all my guitars are gold and black. Not all of them. But, yeah. So I was like, what? This is fantastic. It's a gold pedal. Uh, I thought it was great. And it wasn't, it's not like Speedbolt gold or anything, but. Um, yeah, it's a very muted gold. Yeah. It, I thought it looked beautiful. I was, you know, all you have to do is watch the unboxing people and you'll see my actual reaction to it. And and I also love the badge that you put on it. That was actually like a Speedbolt Sparkle gold. Yeah, yeah, um, thank you. The, those badges are, are kind of my, you know, my signature thing on those. And those are actually uh, a black aluminum. So they're, they're solid metal. Wow. Oh, that's cool. Nice. Too cool, man. Okay, so... Listen, uh, this pedal, what I think is very interesting is that when it, it's a Delphine, it's called the Delphine, it is a delay. But then you say, well, it's a modulated tape delay. So I was expecting other sounds and playability like other uh, tape delays that, that we've had. I didn't get the same impression with this I, you know it might be the tape delay because of the preamp i don't know and there's some tape delayness out of the modulation but it's not like oh i can adjust the tape speed and all that stuff uh or the the fidelity of the tape this is this was a totally different thing and it was incredibly playable one thing that i really loved about it was the mix because that is where i was I didn't get locked into, well, now this, my sound is just going to sound like this modulated delay sound. I got so much depth uh, and dynamic out of just messing around with the mix knobs. I was just, I was just really blown away by it. You know, that's, that's great to hear. Um, I get, I, I reject a lot of feedback that I get from the internet because they say, oh, you know, your mix knob has to go full wet or blah, 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 blah. But to get the dynamic out of a delay pedal of this type, you need to have it maxed out at 50-50. You have to hear huh. your original signal to appreciate the delay that's coming after it. Yeah, um, or else it just sounds like a wacky effect. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yep. Exactly. Totally. exactly. And, and like I said earlier, you know, I, I won't make anything that I won't use live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, now, you do make a point about the preamps on this. Talk to us about the preamp, and then also you, it's, it's got two channels. It's got channel one and channel two. So take it away. Yeah, yeah, sure thing. So it is an identical circuit on on side one and side two. Um, I I made it because when I play live, I like a long delay and a short delay. So I found myself using <laughs> uh, I found myself using you know two delays side by side, and I said I, I can make something better than this. Um, and yeah, then I can only take up one power port on, on my power supply. Um, and if I want to get crazy ambient, I'll just put them both on together. Uh, and if I want to dial it down, I'll just dial it on the preamp. And, uh, you know, an Echoplex is not an Echoplex without the preamp. 
is really not. It, it is that is something that is sorely missing when people say I'm looking for that vintage tone. Well, you need that simulated variac sounds to get what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, there's obviously not there's not a variac inside of this thing. Um, I'm simulating it with a a pretty high end op amp. Um, it's the it's a op amp similar to what you would find in a Zen drive. Okay. Um, so it's that real amp like sound. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really that that push pre the delay that gets you that high headroom that comes out of the delay. Uh, so that's really where I find you know looking at, at schematics of the old uh, echoplexes and echo rex and, and things like that. Um, where I find the the multi head tape delay style things get that magic from a preamp. Um, so that was something that I said, hey, if I'm going to make this, I want it to include this piece of the puzzle. And uh, you know, if when you get the chance, um, you know, off air, go ahead and dial everything down but the preamp uh, on both channels, and you will get a really nice sounding lift out of just those two sides. Uh, and that's something that I was really going for is, hey, if I want to use one side, it's just a delay. Mm-hmm. And I want to use one side, as just a preamp. You know, can I alternate in between the two and get a really nice sound? It's kind of like having two presets, but not having two presets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was something that I really wanted. I, it's, just, it's simple to use, got a simple control set. Um, you know, that, that, was, that was definitely the aim of this pedal for sure. Can you explain to us, what an op amp is. <laughs> uh, so if you have an, an op amp is an amplifier in the most basic, basic, basic terms. Um, if you were to try to plug, I'm going to go ahead and use the example of your desk again. If you're going to plug directly into your desk, the reason you can hear it is because of op amps. Right. Um, if you want to elevate that sound, the way to do that is to more add more amplifiers before it. Uh, and those come in the form of, of two-stage op amps and single-stage op amps and four-stage op amps. Uh, and all they do is they boost the signal, but they do it in a different way. So if you were to look at a transistor, and I think everybody, everybody here knows what a germanium transistor looks like. Oh. So uh, multiply that by 1,000, and that is what is inside of an op amp. Oh, wow. Uh, and, yeah, an op amp is a, maybe not a 1,000, it depends on what the model is, but uh, an op amp is a, a collection of hundreds of transistors and hundreds of resistors on one piece of silicon. Uh, that is just a condensed form of what you're trying to get out of the big analog hardware. You know, you probably see some guys that make amps uh, and they use the massive capacitors and the massive resistors. Well, all of that, but you know, it's 2020. Let's shrink all that down. Uh, and actually, I'm sorry, it's 1980. This is really 80s technology. <laughs> Let's shrink all that down. Nice. Um, and make it more practical for you. Very cool. Thank you for that explanation. <laughs> I'm sure that there will people, be people who will tell me that I'm wrong in some way, shape, or form, but in general, that's that's what it is. Never. <laughs> yeah, well, it, you know, we have people of all levels listening to the show, and it, it's real common for us to, to throw around terms, you know, like uh, we, we don't we don't break everything down every single time, but... Um, sometimes we get a, a different take on something like you, like when you were talking about the preamp, I thought that was fantastic. So we want to make sure that we are all in on the conversation and not just like, well, now they're talking over my head and I don't know what's going on. Um, not that you would sound like that. Cause I've sounded like that. That's, that's the reason <laughs> I freaking started the show, man. So it's funny that you mentioned the long delay and the short delay and <laughs> it would be really interesting uh, and and if you if you get a chance, check w- it, next time you look at that demo again. I bet I bet our settings are pretty close. Uh, you know, I'm gonna take a picture of mine and I'll, I'll send it to you. And I'll okay. See if it's closer. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so you got the Delphine drive now. Now their two are playing off of each other. And when I was at the studio, hearing it on the phone, okay, and it, they started speculating on what uh, those preamps were because I said, well, it's you know, it's based off of a. F- of a famous spin and the, and one of them said I bet cha- I I bet signal 1 or circuit 1 is an echoplex and circuit 2 is an electric mistress. 
Ooh. Huh. And they said, ah. said, that's pretty much, that's what I think I'm hearing. No, 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 it's not that. It's not that. So then there became a fight over what they were thinking that this pedal that they heard on an iPhone. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> so uh, for the record, everyone, apparently it is not an electric mistress and an echo. No, person. nope, nope. If I make one of those, I'll try to make it better. But it's hard because my favorite pedal of all time is the electric mistress. Aha, uh-huh. gotcha. All right. Now, this says pre-order right now. Yes. Uh, it's been, man, it's been a crazy year. Um, so I went into the year, I, I built everything in batches of 50 to 100. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I went into 2020 with all this inventory, and I was like, crap, this is going to be a very, very bad year. Uh, and as soon as you know Trump started cutting checks to everybody, everything was gone. Um, and then... March, there was the, I'm calling it the great enclosure shortage of 2020. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find any enclosures. And then I could get enclosures. And then all the components were gone. Uh, and then yeah. you know something else. It, it was just a disaster uh, month after month. And so I've been leaking out small batches of everything um, through the year. You know, I just got done with a, a full production run of, of Songbirds. There's a lot of those. Um I just ran a small run of Delphines. Uh, those sold out in about, I don't know, maybe 48 hours. Wow. Um, it, it was great. And I, again, everybody, thank you so much. It's been, you know, a small business. It's the lifeblood of the, the company. And I can't, I can't buy more stuff unless I sell the stuff that I already have. Yeah. Um, so I'm currently working on another batch for pre-order for October 1st. Uh, and I'm going to make it. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a bigger batch than the one that people are accustomed to. Um, so I hope there'll be some leftover for if anybody hears the podcast and, and wants to hop on board. Um, you know, after this, I've got to hop back onto a small batch of clockworks and a small batch of, of prisms mm. for people that have been waiting for those for a while. Um, everyone's been really patient. Everyone's been really, uh, you know, accepting. And, you know, I've told everyone that's, that's pre-ordered from me, like, Hey, if, if things go bad for you and you need to cancel your pre-order, that's cool. Just let, you send me an email. Let me know. I'll cancel it for you. It's fine. Right. Because um, money's kind of a weird thing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I haven't released anything new this year because it's been, it's just, I don't know. It feels kind of dirty releasing a new product that people might really, really want and maybe can't have right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, the quarantine has been like a blessing and a curse at the same time because I've been able to knock out a bunch of projects that I've been, you know, 85% done with for maybe a year. Mm-hmm. Um, so hopefully when everything comes back to normal, I'm going to be able to come back with, you know, uh, four or five different pedals that, that people were, you know, kind of waiting on to see what's next for Tone Tuga. Um, and it's going to be some really cool stuff. I promise. Good, good. Well, I, I'm thrilled to death and you've, you've got a fan here now. It's an outstanding pedal specifically. I mean, where I can only, reference the the pedal that 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 we played which is the delphine i it's honestly one of the best pedals i I can remember playing honestly great thanks so much so people make sure you get on this pre-order uh and then if not beg borrow steel do whatever you can to get one of these things i highly recommend (laughs) it thank you so much for uh sharing all that about your stuff man yeah Um, sure thing thanks for having me on yeah oh, oh we're not done yet there buddy (laughs) <laughs> uh jared big bad jared's got some got some business for us yes i do ladies and gentlemen it's come time in the program and now we get to play a little game and the game is called would you rather goodness that was fantastic wow. thank you <laughs> that was for you mike so Assume you own no amplifiers at all. Your amps are gone, they're stolen, or they disappeared during the night from being stolen. (laughs) So, (laughs) would you rather have these two iconic vintage combo amps as replacements? Would you rather have a pre-CBS Fender Princeton Reverb and a 1965 Bluesbreaker or at Marshall Bluesbreaker, just for those who aren't familiar. <laughs> it's it's Marshall, yeah. 
Thank you. Or favorite modern amp head with three different cabinets with your choice of speaker configuration and speaker models. So basically, would you rather have two awesome classics or build your own? Well, and two awesome classic combo amps specifically. Okay, sure. they have to be combo amps. Well, that they are. That it doesn't have to be. I mean, that that's what they. <laughs> they I didn't make them. They made them. Law. <laughs> no more stacks. Only combos. Well, you're in existence. Yes, the old the old ones are combos, but the new ones specifically would would have to be your favorite amp head. Right. And all the different and they and oh, three man. different cabinets and choice of speaker configurations. Which would essentially give you potentially three very different sounding amps. For sure. Okay, this is a really good one. And who sent that to us there, Pally? Oh, this was sent by somebody that you did not tell us. Who sent it? <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. It is not an in the email, buddy. Who that, did send it? That's from Bruce Bacon. Hey, Bruce Bacon. He's, I love the He last shot name. that to us, and I thought that was a great one. Thank you, Bruce, for sending that. Um, my Thank bad. You. I forgot to send that to Jared. But we uh, love the bacon. Yeah, that was a great question. Very, very fun question. So, Tony, let's yeah. hear from you, bud. I mean, actually, this is pretty easy for me. Um, <laughs> I mean, my first amp was a early post CBS Princeton Reverb, and I loved that amp. That was probably my favorite all time amp. And the and a JTM forty five is another great amplifier. I mean, to me, oh, yeah. it's not so much the speakers as much as the the guts oh, of an amplifier. Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, I'll take you know. Even though now, I will tell you that some of the early you, you do like the creambacks. Well, yeah, I mean, I can I can live with that, but I can also live with any of the the speakers that that Fender used as stock in that time frame, as well as Marshall. I mean, Marshall JBLs, right? Were they using JBLs back no, then? No, no, only on in like the, the uh, well, Speaker One Hundred and One podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they they were either using Utahs or uh, uh, well, I guess if it was pre CBS, it was probably a Utah. Um, and then the Marshall would have had Celestians in it, probably. Um, pre rollers pre rollers yeah. yeah. But to me, th both of those amps, I mean, those are just classic amplifiers. Um, I think I'd much rather have both of those than uh, a single amp head with multiple cabinets. Because, I, I, I mean, Todd might disagree with me. I'm sure he does. But, I mean... <laughs> Um, the, 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 the multiple cabinets really wouldn't do much, if anything, for me. Yeah. If, unless it was just, you know, just straight up 212, I'm happy with that. Okay. Excellent. All right. Uh, Jared? That is a good question. Um, I do want to say, though, that I, I do have amp heads that it, it does, it does matter if they're in a four, you know, uh, Four by twelve or two by twelve or oh yeah, I'll you know. give you that. Yeah, especially my Buddha amp. I mean, that sounds like an awesome amp when it's in a four twelve. The 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 Buddha amp that I have that has the two twelve, it just in it that it came stock with, you know, it's a Buddha two twelve mm. cap. It just I don't mm. like it. <laughs> Neither does Todd. No. He's Man, growling the, at it. The, for one of the first times. I went over to Jared's. He's like, oh, I'll plug you into this amp. And I was like, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he no likey. It sounds really good in a 412, though. It's it's crazy, the difference. Yeah. However, in this case, because, you know, probably mostly because of the Marshall Blues Breaker, I'm going to go with the Marshall and the Princeton, you know, because, you know, the Blues Breaker has a pre roll of speakers, which are now worth tons of money and people say that the you know you can't copy those speakers because of the the way the paper was made for the speakers and so on and so forth and yeah, then you right. have the <laughs> then you have the hand wired you know they're both hand wired i mean those are awesome they're like boutique boutique amps of the day mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. that is true i i'm gonna take the safe road and save my back and just go with those two Princeton nice. and Marshall. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's hear from Mike. I, uh, so the, really the question is, do you want the vintage amp 
with all of the baggage that comes with vintage gear, or do you want a brand new setup? That's a good point. Yep. Uh, and and, if and you're a lot of go, the new amps actually basically emulate that to a T. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there's some differences. There's definitely differences. They're, they're old, <laughs> old hardware sounds different than new hardware for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, for a couple of different reasons, you know, one safety standards, a lot different than they were in the seventies. You kill yourself getting one of the old ones, <laughs> literally. But, but at the same time, you know, you flip one of those original blues breakers for a lot of money. A lot of people are looking mm-hmm. for those. Uh, I'm going to go the safe road. I'm going to take the new setup. Oh, I'm going to take the new setup. It's interesting. Uh, you each called it safe, and they were different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm just I'm okay. So uh, when I first got addicted to vintage gear. I bought a Fender Showman, which was the old uh, George Thorogood amp. And man, you can get those things for 500 bucks nowadays. You know why? Because they're vintage and they're a piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was 50-50. Flip a coin. Is it going to turn on? Is it not going to turn on? Uh, And that's why I would go for the new setup. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, on your point, um, a repaired vintage amp sometimes doesn't sound like a vintage right. amp because <laughs> the right. parts are just not available. For sure. It's been worked over so many times. It's just, it's not the same amp anymore. And you're getting to the point in history where, you know, I, I kind of feel bad for everybody that buys the original clones on reverb because you're going to get 30, 35, 40 years out of a capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor. And we're about coming up to that time when people are going to pay two grand for a brick. Hmm. Hmm. But it has a horsey never, on it. But it yeah. does. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't fall for that one yet. Yeah. <laughs> How about oh, you, Todd? Oh my gosh, this is I really didn't... hard. Oh, no, it it's is not. Hard. Go with the two vintage ones. Uh, <sighs> Marshall. You know, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. I will. Marshall. <laughs> Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. You know what? I'm, I'm get. Uh, at first, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, this is easy peasy. I'm gonna grab the Princeton and the Blues Breaker. Um, and I'm, and I'm really leaning towards that right now because actually, I think if I was recording, I'd want to mic both of those and and play them both through the same. You know, somebody's been blowing cigar smoke into that for forty years. Nice. <laughs> uh, That's why they sound good. But I will say I am really enamored with the Balthazar amps. Ooh, okay. Balthazar film noir. I, I think I think you know what? I'm gonna go with that. And I, as far as speaker configuration, I would just want I would want to be able to have a a range one twelve. Four you know, four twelve, two twelve, one twelve. Whatever Bang. it takes. Yeah, all three of those. I, I think I'd like to do that. So there's that's, that's, that's I'm sticking choice. with it. That's I'm sticking smart with choice. it. Man, yeah, and those are oof. Those are really sweet things there. One dang it, tell you what. All right. <laughs> that was a great question. Thank you so much to Bruce Bacon for sending that. And uh hey, if you've got a great question you want to ask us, please let us know. Uh, we would love to read it on this show. All right, Tony Baloney, yeah. we got some people to thank. We do, we do, we do. These would be the this, or this would be the section of the podcast where we thank our executive producers. Yep. Now, I think <laughs> you might be wondering how do I become an executive? Well, first you're probably wondering what is an executive producer, and Tell secondly, me. how do I become one? Tell me. The answer is quite simple. Go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs, and you will find a couple of different levels in which you can participate. And each level comes with a bevy of prize packages, including things like T-shirts and keychains and pedals and, oh, picks and stickers and barefoot buttons. So we've got the and giveaways. Don't forget the giveaways, whatever Big you ones. do. 
but there's the 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 top of the heap, if you will, the executive producer level. Mm-hmm. You get all that great, great stuff. And in addition, Jared, what else happens? You get to have your name read on the thing. Your name read on the thing. And that's do what it. I'm going to do it. I, I, I swear to you, I will. So let's thank these executive producers. How about Mr. Tom Barazin, <laughs> Martin Cliff, John Daly, Chris Carney, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ, Michael Van Zant, Ken Sayers, Brian Robison, Michael Senchuk, Stefan Lamb, Johnny Knowles, Anthony Lanthrop, John Anglin, Tyler Bray, Brad Partridge, Chris Heidel, John Esterly, Doug Gann, Justin Jones, Brett Alexander, James White, Matt Hart, Liam Martin, James Pennington, Richard Kendall, Levi Main, Tyg Harmon, and John Williams. Hey. Thank you, gentlemen. And that's it, right? Oh, no, 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 Jared, don't huh? leave us yet because we have just a, a, a step above, if you will, of the Ooh. executive producers. These are executive, executive producers. We like to call them our grand poobas. Nice. They wear a very special fez whenever they listen to the podcast. That's it's required. <laughs> it is required. And these grand poobas in addition to the executive producers and the other Patreons. We could not do this without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga, Cody Lane, Cody Foster, Sean S. S. Tommy Manasco, Mark Garten, Christopher Marshall, Adam Johnson, Steve Keys, Zach Melton, and Tim Nowak. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. Yes, 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 and uh, we've got. Uh, they at, by this time they should have received their um, flashlight pedals from uh, Copper Sound. Yes, which oh, go to cool. our. Uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you I so much, one, everybody. I have one thing I want to say. Please, I wanted to send our condolences <laughs> out to our man David Kaminga. His oh, mother yeah. passed away. Oh, sorry to hear yeah, that. Big loss. So, David Kaminga is a great friend of our show and a great supporter is. of our show. And uh, yeah, that's tough. So, uh, big shout out to you, David, Mister Man, Steve. <laughs> Dave, I, I see you talking to me. <laughs> is Dave there? Hey, uh, is Dave on the line? <laughs> Jerry Newsom. Yeah, hey, Dave here. Is that? Uh... <laughs> Dave's not here, man. <laughs> All right. <laughs> His name is Mike. Yes, Mike from Tone Tuga FX. Where can people find your stuff? Right. So uh, keep an eye on Instagram. That's the biggest place that I'm present on. Uh, if you want to see what we currently have available, hit up Reverb or hit up ToneTugaEffects.com. Excellent. Get on that, people. I'm telling you, go get that Delphine while there are some left. Yeah, that's a nice pedal. Oh, my golly. Uh, all right, Tony Baloney. Yes. Where can people find your stuff? Go over to PickGuardian.com. Check out some of the stuff that I've got on there. I've got things you can order online, but... As we've said before, most of what I do is very custom work, and it's probably best if you just shoot me an email, let me know what you need. I will take very good care of you, and we'll work out the deal and get you something that you love. Your guitar will thank you. Yes, it will. Profusely. Jared, how about yourself? And if you'd like, you can load up those pick cards with some Brandon <laughs> Wan pickups. Which many have done in the past and are very happy. They have. They have. Uh, yes, sir. I make pickups, uh, all sorts of different pickups, uh, much more than on the website. So if there's something that uh, you've been wanting that you don't see on my website, just let me know and ask me, and I probably do make them. Right and I also on. do rewinds. And, and if he doesn't make them, he figures out a way to make them. That's mm-hmm. right. I know that from firsthand experience. That's correct. Awesome. It was that, that Fender. Uh, the Marauder. With the pickups. Yeah, with the pickups with the, underneath with the, hidden, the pick hidden, pick, hidden pickups. Yeah, it took like 10,000 magnets. <laughs> I like the Marauder. Anyway, BrandonWildPickups.com. Cool. 
All right. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody, you can shoot me an email, Todd at theguitarnobs.com. You can send me a DM on Instagram at guitarnobs. Uh, please send us your would you rathers and uh, anything else you'd like to share with us. We really appreciate it. We get a lot of great mail and um, uh, happy to read much of that uh, on the show. So humongous thank you to Mike Varela of Tone Tuga Effects for a making one hell of a pedal, uh, the Delphine right. and the other ones that he makes, and also for spending his time on our show tonight with you all. Yeah, guys, thanks so much for having me on, and um, you know, re- really had a good time. Good, heck, heck that's yeah. what we want to do. Excellent. Yeah. All right, everybody, have a fantastic guitar week and subscribe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We are going to do a little sh- uh, shaboozle. David, we got, um, sorry, Mike, we, <laughs> I can't get you. I'm, I, feel <laughs> like, I feel like a piece of crap. Whoever that dude. guy is. Okay. Forget that guy. <laughs> Tony, you there? I am. Can you hear me? <laughs> there, I want you to you leave go. it in. I can't get his last in. name right. And I can't get this. I feel like an ass. If you're like, hey, I got to take a leak, clap. It's fine. <laughs> If your name's Mike, Dave, whatever it is, <laughs> and you're a Valerian <laughs> or, or a Varelin <laughs> or Varelin, <laughs> right? That's a, a variety of such. I yeah. like it. That's well, you what's, know what I that's mean. What, yeah, it's interesting. Do people like, like I'm tired of the virus, you yeah. know, kind of thing like, oh, I'm done with the virus shit. Yeah. No, you're not. You get it now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and her husband didn't have it, and they no, you know they live together. You get it now, <laughs> right? That's what happened. It's exactly what I'm I'll, telling you. I'll exactly what upon happened. you. <laughs> oh, I messed up your last name again, <laughs> Valerian. Val- I wanted to say Valerian, and it's you not me Valerian. It's okay. Varela. Here we go. I'm gonna do it again. Oh yeah, well, right. Broskies. I All right, you man. Guys, I'll let you go. Uh, All right. We'll be doing this again soon. All right, sounds good. Ta-ta. Like next week. Tony's got to pee. Bye, Tony. Ah, bye-bye. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram, at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.